Weeks. I'm your host, Joey Hollywood, and I'm trying to get through all 50 movies in this 50 movie box set from Mill Creek in 50 weeks. I'm joined by Rue, which is Quentin's daughter, and uh, we also have Quentin over here in his urn. He's still interrupting the videos. Uh, before I get started on today's video, I accidentally slandered one of you commenters. Slandered? Defamed? Def defamation? I'm not sure. One of those, one of those words, I'm not very litigious. I said that one of you was angry with me because of my thoughts on White Zombie. I misremembered what that person commented, so disregard. You know, I apologize. Please don't sue me for, for slander or defamation. But without further ado, let's talk about today's movie, which is Giant Gila Monster from 1959. Classic B movie. Some would say classic bad movie. But I think there's a lot of fun to be found here that I think it elevates beyond a bad movie. I think it's a good monster flick from the 1950s. You know, with those caveats, it's just a fun time. Like so many of these movies in this box set, it begins extremely abruptly with narration. It gets right into the plot. Like, like the opening scene is a couple driving their little car and they get attacked by an off-screen Gila monster. Well, not really off-screen, you do see its hand. The movie just gets gets going from there. Which, which believe me, when you watch nothing but B-movies from these box sets, that's always appreciated. I know my experience might be a little different from maybe someone else who's just putting this on, but let me tell you, watching so much of these as, as much as I do, sometimes the enjoyment kind of slips away after a little bit, like something I would normally really like. And I try to identify that so I can tell you guys and like, oh, I think I would really enjoy this if I wasn't doing a 50 movies in 50 weeks thing. But this is, this is not, that's not the case here. This one is just fun. Like the moment it started, I was like, all right, I'm having a good time. I think part of the reason why this movie stands apart from other B flicks of the time is it doesn't feel like a collection of scenes. It feels like everything's kind of building off to each other, not in a particularly artful way, just in a, in a competent way. And I think something else I really like about the movie is, is the miniature effects. I wish there was more of them because they are incredibly charming. And it goes through the whole typical monster movie plot very, very efficiently. The opening scene has the, the couple getting killed by the Gila monster and then uh, people are getting constantly run off the road. Our main character is a mechanic who notices some, some interesting trends. Uh, I love the, 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 the way, the vernacular of the kids in, in this movie. They're like, hey, daddy-o, and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's a perfect little time capsule. And about 17 minutes in, you get your first full view of the Gila monster, which is just a regular Gila monster on a miniature set. It's, it's super charming. And the mechanic is super charming. Every character in this is just a lot of fun. Uh, there's a part where the big cat, where the mechanic gets paid like a big bonus, and he's like, wow, two 20s. Like, he's just like super happy about getting two 20s. And it's, the simplicity of it is, is so charming. It almost feels like, like something from the Andy Griffith show. It, it just, it, it's a charming vibe all around. One thing, because I've seen this movie before, but one thing I did not remember is how musical it was. There's many moments in the movie where the, the movie just stops so our main character can play the guitar or the ukulele. At the very end of the movie, there's a dance, and they play one of his songs at the dance. And I, I don't know, it feels like, like a homey sitcom from the 1950s or 60s, but with a giant, giant Gila monster in it. And I, I think there's something very charming about that. I, I, I'm sorry, I keep on saying the word charming, but there, there's, you know, I don't have my thesaurus on me to figure out other ways of saying it. But I really like this one. It's always a welcome addition to like anything like Riff Tracks or Mystery Science Theater or Elvira, anything like that. Like once I see it's giant Gila monster, I'm like, oh, I'm in for a good time. And, and I feel like there's enough like weirdness in this movie that if you do watch it with Elvira or Mystery Science Theater, there's a lot to build off of, and then the movie's just fun on top of it. So I really feel like you can't go wrong with any avenue you take with watching this movie. There's a lot of stuff that's set up in the first act that's paid off in, this, in the third, and that's super welcome, because a lot of movies on these, these box sets, they'll set stuff up that has no payoff, and they'll pay off on stuff with no setup. So 
it, it, I don't want to say it's artistful, but it is, it is competent in that way, and I think that's just so refreshing. After you know, uh, go. This is my third year doing this, so so anytime I like just the minimum bit of, bit of effort sometimes is like great. Actually, this whole box set's been a lot more fun than the previous two box sets. But uh, yeah, I think that's all I had to say on the subject. Fun movie, I'd recommend it, and uh, so I don't waste any more of your time. I bid you farewell. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next week. Remember, please be kind and rewind.